scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are principles in prayer that we must understand. And then number three, we will wrap up as God grants grace with principles of spiritual legislation we need to know how to decree how to enforce how to create realities the creative dimension of prayer how we use prayer to shape things how we use prayer to influence cities how we use prayers to manipulate outcomes praise the lord so please listen let your heart be open in jesus name psalm 65 verse 2 unto thou that answers prayer shall all flesh come psalm 65 and verse 2 that is our major uh, okay O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come there are not many people that hear prayer we settled that in part one there are many people who are being prayed unto but there is only one who hears prayer please understand you can pray to a stone you can pray to a molten image you can pray to your uncle you can make petitions to all kinds of people but the bible settles the matter of answered prayer oh thou is not a team it's not a committee only god can answer prayer apostle but our fathers in the village pray and answers come it is true they really do not pray they only fraternize with spirits who take advantage of the provisions that are allocated in the realm of the spirit and by it they manipulate possibilities in the earth realm are we together now yes you know idols do not answer prayer because you cannot fellowship with them you know stones and rocks and water and all these things the possibility for fellowship is not there that personification that allows for fellowship is not there and there are spirit entities that are at the back of these things that serve as mediums or the priests that mediate between you and the supposed gods but let me tell you the truth there is only one god that can answer prayer and it is unto that God we are mandated that all flesh should come. Praise the Lord. Dimensions of prayer. <clears throat> there are many of them, but we are considering three for this series. It is important for us to know the various aspects of our lives that prayer is the key for, that captures that prayer captures in as much as it is true that prayer is not the only key but prayer is a very major key and it's important for us to understand the dimensions of prayer in the life of a believer that in performing your priesthood as a believer you must understand the dimensions of prayer number one the first dimension of prayer is for fellowship and growth write it down please
prayer attempts to sponsor the life and the power as it relates to fellowship and growth that means when you pray as a believer one dimension of prayer is the prayer that is targeted towards fellowship and growth are we together we grow spiritually primarily by the ministry of prayer and the word primarily there are other auxiliary support systems two of them basically in fact the standard procedure for spiritual growth in scripture is prayer the word fellowship and service this four a believer cannot grow outside of these four provisions maybe you need to write it down so you don't forget believers only grow in this kingdom based on their interaction with these four dimensions generally speaking the ministry of prayer number one the ministry of the word scripture number two the ministry of fellowship whether fellowship with god and fellowship with the brethren corporate fellowship the community lifestyle and then number four service that means you can know as a believer whether you are growing or not by checking whether you are actively engaging in these four dimensions if prayer is not working in your life you are not growing if you are not growing in the understanding of scripture you are not growing number three if you have been around for a long time and there is no part of your christian experience that is dedicated towards service then there is a dimension of growth you are not experiencing and finally fellowship we have fellowship with god and with men if you have fellowship with god alone you are still not growing are we together now yes i was glad when they said unto me come let us go to the house of the lord why am i teaching you all of these things because you see as you begin to grow spiritually it's important for you to not just act out of faith alone but your faith must grow into trust that means you have come to a point where you know the workings you should know why you are growing are we together now they shouldn't just say why are you growing and you say well i'm in koinonia and they feed me well spiritually that is true but that's not accurate enough you should be able to mentor people that means i should be able to hand over a believer that just got born again and i say sam train this person you shouldn't ask me what should i do it's an insult to your training are, are we together now if someone is handed over to you now and say please um pastor or prophet or brother or whoever you are mentor this person you should not sit down and then you are just lost and wondering okay what do i do now do you pray no 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 no. you already know the boundaries of growth are prayer the word fellowship and service that's it any other thing outside of these four jurisdictions is a total waste of time it will not contribute to your growth are we together yes so we're dealing with the dimension of fellowship and growth we've looked at luke chapter 9 please write i'll give you four scriptures luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the bible says as he prayed jesus now the bible says the fashion of his countenance changed transformation that comes through prayer remember i've taught you here that prayer is primarily a vehicle that attempts to change you not just change things change you it is the changed you that can now change things are we together now prayer changes the believer it changes you by opening your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit it changes you by pruning flesh in you it changes you by opening up doors for more of the anointing of the spirit the bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered number one and his raiment was white two things happen the fashion of his countenance and then his raiment was white and glistering that's glory there are we together now 
first corinthians chapter 14 from verse 2 and verse 4 first corinthians chapter 14 the bible says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue now he's speaking he's talking about uh, praying in tongues but then it is still prayer that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god so you can speak to god the bible says that's fellowship you speak to god for no man understandeth him how be it in the spirit he's praying in his room he's praying in a church but the bible says he's in the spirit and that in that spirit he's speaking mysteries unto god verse 4 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what edifieth himself edifieth himself growth you grow is an architectural word edifice that means that you are growing the foundation has been laid which is christ now the superstructure is being lifted so that is important for you to understand you neglect prayer you ignore prayer you will not grow you don't grow by inheritance you grow by engaging the forces allocated for the growth of the saints are we together jude 1 jude has only one chapter verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved are we together building up yourselves building what building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying so you build yourself when you pray the first dimension of prayer is as a vehicle and a tool for fellowship and growth building up yourselves on your most holy faith that means look at me if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today is because your prayer life is not growing are we together the mountain of yesterday that made me cry should not make me cry today again listen let me tell you you know that a believer is growing in the spirit when you get to a point where you can say like the psalmist the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of the same thing cannot continue to buffet you no three years ago you were three hours away from paying your rent and you were perturbed you were you were confused and scattered and disorganized three years later you should have seen god's faithfulness enough and grown spiritually to not allow the same issue make you afraid again are we together yes. you should not fear the same thing twice once is enough growth should take you out of the realm where that kind of fear should come he said do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil he didn't say there will not be evil it is there but i will not be afraid of it evil does not have to be absent from your life for you to be free of fear i will fear no evil why for thou art with me not for the evil has gone thou art with me thy rod and thy staff two of them are sticks but they don't do the same thing thy rod and thy staff they comfort me praise the lord now first john chapter one we'll read from verse one to five or maybe just one to um yeah let's look at one to five apostle john is remember apostle john is god's beloved that was the man that understood fellowship he was the one who would lean on the chest of jesus to hear well what he was saying john was the one person who showed us the he showed us a glimpse of the power and victory over death theologically speaking he was banished to an isle called patmos on account of his testimony for christ and this man was thrown in boiling oil and he would not fry are we together they brought him out and did not know what to do with him and they banished him in that island and that was where he got the revelation of the book of revelation praise the lord so now every time john is teaching us on fellowship it's important to listen 
because he truly is the apostle of love and one who understood fellowship did you know that in all of the gospel it was the book of john that taught us on the ministry of the holy spirit extensively all other synoptics did not talk a so much in fact it was matthew just spoke once or twice it was even mark that spoke a little about it luke gave us accounts of it was very detailed but for some reason these guys skipped the holy ghost but not john from 14 down to 16 john was detailing the ministry of the holy spirit are we together that which was from the beginning you notice that john always starts from the beginning i like john he teaches from the beginning john 1 verse 1 in the beginning first john 1 verse 1 the beginning again that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life verse 2 we're reading to 5 for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father was manifest unto us uh-huh three that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that we that ye also may have what fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is you are fellowshipping with us but don't be deceived that we are just flesh our fellowship is with the father this john speaking now and with his son jesus christ so there is a possibility in the priesthood of the believer to use prayer as an instrument of fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son verse 4 and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full the last verse this is then the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him there is no darkness at all fellowship with the light fellowship with the light fellowship with the light as i engage in the word and as i pray i am in the earth realm but the bible says that fellowship is with the living personality not just scripture fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son hallelujah now look up please many believers think fellowship only starts when visions come many believers think you are not in fellowship when you pray until you see something or hear something or a wind pushes you while you are praying so while people approach prayer for fellowship they continue to be superstitious in their desire they are waiting for gold dust they are waiting for silver dust they are waiting to fall under the anointing they are waiting for just now those things can come those things do come but listen the basis of your confidence is the authority of scripture are we together that it does not matter what happens to my flesh in as much as my understanding interprets it that every time i engage in prayer i am fellowshipping with the father and with the son apostle i finished my prayer i did not feel anything scripture cannot be broken see because if you sit down and you are waiting for visions and experiences and prophecy and word of knowledge alone now let me tell you the truth it is almost impossible for you to have a rich prayer life are we together without one or more of these experiences accompanying intense times of prayer usually they will come they are the things that follow his presence but they are not the basis for believing that he came is someone learning now there are people who have a very strong prophetic inclination they can say in Jesus name and they are out of their body it doesn't mean they are prayerful no they are not prayerful it's just that the equipping and the wiring within them towards the prophetic are we together and towards prophetic experiences will give allowance for these interactions so you come now and say in jesus name and while you are praying at a point you get frustrated and stop and say lord show me something now encourage me give me a vision give me a dream there is nowhere in the bible where your growth is tied to 
your seeing things in scripture no your growth is tied to the degree to which you conform to the image and the character of the christ and your growth is tied to the degree listen carefully to which you understand the mysteries of the kingdom that culminates to your walking in dominion are we blessed but then it's important for you to know that one dimension of prayer is a dimension that provides for fellowship and growth many believers do not understand that there is a dimension for fellowship and growth and it is dangerous if you do not know this because that then means that you cannot position your heart by faith to believe and know that i'm fellowshipping with the father most times people think that the moment we go to pray is all about binding it's all about casting are we together and warfare while it is true that these are dimensions captured in prayer they are not the only dimensions if your prayer life is only full of binding and casting then you may be casting demons truly but the richness that comes with that koinonia the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship fellowship hallelujah let's hurry up number two the second dimension of prayer is a dimension of prayer that allows for obtaining promises and making requests take note the first dimension of prayer is for fellowship and growth the second dimension of prayer is obtaining promises and making requests that means that there is a dimension that prayer the role that prayer plays as far as obtaining promises and making requests is concerned hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33 the bible tells us promises can be obtained it can become your own hallelujah who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises not just that they were taught it's a popular word many of you who like to play with hebrew and greek words the word obtained is the word katalambano it means to not only possess but to make it your own are we together now obtain promises that means it is and it is true from scripture but i make it my experience obtain promises the bible is full of promises my brothers and my sisters genesis to revelation is full of promises and that in prayer men and women can obtain promises i can take what is written in scripture and make it my experience That means the fact that it is a promise for you does not mean you have it. Listen, listen, listen. This is where I want you to pay attention to both the things I'm saying and the ones I'm not saying. Because many believers think that just because you find it in scripture and maybe quote it, it's yours. No, sir. Promises are obtained. Obtained to become your own. And upon Mount Zion, he says, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. It is their possession, but it's not in their hands yet. Their possession. Are we together now? Obtain promises. Mark chapter 11, 23 and 24. Is God helping someone tonight? 23 and 24. That means the dimension of prayer that is allocated for obtaining promises and making requests. You can make requests. Mark chapter 11, Jesus is teaching here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he had saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said so he's talking about having things making them your physical possession next verse never forget this scripture read with me ready one to read therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire uh-huh when ye pray 
believe that thou receive them and thou shalt have them so you receive and have in prayer you receive and have in prayer you make the truths of scripture your experience when you pray notice what things soever ye desire so it is not wrong to have a desire hello look up please it is not wrong to have a desire now sometimes you would have heard me talk as though i were trivializing the place of prayer to see that the promises of god you know comes to pass in our lives i'm not trivializing it i'm only showing the excellency are we together of having a passion for the kingdom as being above just needs i continue to pray and speak that in and through prayer my needs be met and they are met prayer is very important you can obtain promises and you can grant that requests are granted now let me show you a scripture that will bless you may it bless you in jesus name john 16 and verse 24 jesus is teaching john 16 and 24 ready look up please read one to read he that told ye have asked nothing in my name he said ask comma and ye shall receive why that your joy may be full your joy may be there but it's not yet full so there is something prayer does to your results which will help to make your joy perfected when we pray it is one of the ways that we cause joy to be overflowing and full of glory why because in tendering our petitions before god if and when they are granted we are at peace and our joy is complete god does not just want us to have joy he wants joy like life eternal to be to the fullest are we together ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full one last scripture as i studied this scripture blessed me in no small way apostle james is talking now james chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 james chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 look at what verse 1 says everybody please look up these apostles were really brilliant people we think just because they were not educated they were dull the holy ghost really made them brilliant people we are the ones who don't understand what they are saying look at james from whence cometh wars and fighting this is crisis management apostle james is saying that in any territory the issue of war and fighting and bitterness are we together and all these evil things against brethren will remain he's tracing the root cause why people fight in church why people antagonize one another why did sam buy this shoe why did this one buy this is she the only one that can make a hair james is saying there is a root cause to this bitterness this envy are you getting the context now he's saying they come from your lusts that war in your members your desires deep desires next verse verse 2 ye lost and have not that means the reason why most people fight and criticize is the absence of that reality in their own lives james is solving a serious problem here that most times when god blesses others and leaves you the side effect is you will be bitter your bitterness will be routed through different channels through advice through backbiting through a supposed correction but james is speaking by the spirit that most times it is empty people that talk bible we're discussing prayer here are we together don't look at anybody look at me god is talking to us together because i know that when i talk like this there are many people who don't sit down to allow the holy spirit to teach them they begin to nod their head in hope that somebody will hear it no no what i say to one i say to all that's scripture let's go back to this it says ye lost and ye have not everybody say have not 
the absence of results and then he says ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain cannot obtain you do not understand the technology that makes promises become real to you to your life and then he says ye fight we're back to his his um introduction now and war yet ye have not and he's saying the reason why you have not is not because your neighbor has is because you do not know how to ask keep that scripture there don't rush verse 3 look at this very carefully it's a healing seminar that james is bringing to the church james is saying i have observed you people believers and i found out that the rate of jealousy the rate of backbiting the rate of talking around is saying the truth is that the foundation for all these things is the absence of the results you talk about in your own life what is there in a crowd what is there in prosperity anointing is not everything of course it is not that when you begin to personalize certain things and create a vendetta around it the bible is saying that is a reflection that you are being paid for the absence of that result come this my lovely lady you two come gentlemen two of you come and stand here clap for them you stand look up do you know for just asking this lady to come and stand here and asking this guy to stand here if you are not careful you are angry already now wait it, i'm not saying you are wicked look up look up look up look up yes I'm, I'm teaching us something here this is prayer wait this is a prayer seminar now watch this i asked her to come and stand here notice you started looking at her from head to toe what is special about her the apostle called now it's not because you are evil it's because there is a desire that the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel respected the need to feel appreciated so when somebody is now experiencing something you crave for except god helps you that pain will be there james is solving that problem now come out and stand the lady is happy her thing but notice you are she does not know you you don't know her but notice if i say you too come and join her you suddenly stop hating her so it was never about hating her is wanting to also participate politicians criticize people and fight them and they sit in a round table and say you know what this thing we are going to run an all-inclusive government you will also eat from it quietly the whole case is closed i called this lady and i did not call this guy and he's frowning and looking at me now listen she will attack this lady in many ways number one don't distract apostle he's preaching while what he may say is true it is not about distraction distraction is just the scapegoat to help you vent a pain that has nothing to do with the subject matter notice anything i do to this lady now will offend you if i bring out i have some money i hope you are not angry still <laughs> carnality in the house of god watch this how much is this lost the bible has already won that he that loves the world the love of the father now look up please you see this lady she was sitting quietly she probably did not have a vision that she would receive this amount of money and now remember you prayed in your room and say oh god <laughs> listen i'm teaching you something look up look up look up we are still in a prayer seminar i'm showing you listen you see you shall know the truth it's not the truth that is there that sets free is the truth that is known remember this is not an issue of hatred even you you are surprised that as loving as you are you hate someone else 
it's not that you hate someone else it's the reaction that happens to all flesh that's why the bible says all flesh will pray prayer is a system that helps you to also obtain watch this you prayed in your room oh god let my destiny helper be in koinonia today because this i need support and god is acting as if he didn't hear you and someone who is sitting in front now watch this the various ways you can attack this lady is as follows one is it not just because worship team is sitting in front i came earlier and they took me at the back it, now remember it's not the issue of worship team the foundation the wall is this because you believe that if it was you you would have been the person to get it are we together so god gives that uh, hold this 500 dollar my dear and god gives this guy hold it now watch this they are holding money and this money is your desire this money is your prayer point in fact quite honestly you have a more legitimate need of this money than them it is more painful if they already have money in their pocket i'm using money for a reason are we together now now look at this my darling baby coming to the front some of you can even be angry with this small girl why is she distracting koinonia it's not so much about her it's about you are, are, are we falling now let me ask this lady now and say go and sit down my dear after service see me and let me give you one big hug from this night her shoe was not put correctly from this night her watch was supposed to be at the other side of the hand from this night why did you tie your hair and, and do it like this why did you do uh, this way left or right now notice those variations of pain is not really about her it is about your not obtaining now watch this if i say ushers bring the basket and they bring a basket here and they start to share one one thousand naira you are now colleagues in greatness do you have your own yes do you have your own let's praise the lord together and listen james is saying that is one way to have peace thank you god bless you watch this are, are we are, are you getting the point now you see a rich man pass and say look at corrupt wicked nigerians corruption is bad in this country you are right but the motivation has nothing to you don't even know whether that person is god that raised a destiny helper to bless him all this anointing be careful though young men like this it takes time as far as i know it takes time for the anointing to come and these people are too young to carry this kind of anointing i will not say anything against anybody but just be aware you see those kinds of things are statements they are not about listen when you learn this when people try to talk about you you don't be angry you too you understand that james has given you intelligence that these people are struggling too your result has a side effect on your audience we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for us we know we know there's more that's found in you and we will never get We know, we know there's more that's found in you. Verse 3 now. Ye ask. Now look, look at this. All other places in scripture just tell us why we don't have. They say we ask. But James broke it down that there are times you can ask and you will still not receive. So that means there are times you did it correctly and yet you did not get results and he's telling you why that every time you ask and you do not receive it could be because you ask and miss leave all that english we are going to deal with it and he says that the motivation 
is that you will consume it upon your lust. Please give us amplified. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. We know. There's more that's found in you. Now read it. Ready? One, two, read, Koinonia. Or you do ask God for them and yet fail to receive because you ask with wrong purpose and evil selfish motives your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it in sensual pleasures so the bible says answered prayer is not only based on the faith of the believer but based on god's vetting of what that answer will do with respect to his kingdom that it is possible to act correctly but in God's intelligence he sees that granting you that answer will not make for kingdom come you can lose it it's not a faith problem it's a motif problem in the school of prayer it's not only faith that is important your motif oh God give me power your faith is correct you are fasting you are praying but heaven will not just come to say give him power they will vet your motives why did you want the power why do you still decide lord give me wealth lord give me influence give me a child give me a wife give me a husband and god is looking at your desire listen you ask and you have not and the Bible says because you ask amiss. Amiss means that your motif has already been corrupted. Are you seeing where the dissipation of energy in prayer for many people is not equal to the results they obtain? They pray for one year. They fast for 40 days. And from the first day of that prayer, their motif was already wrong. Lord, give me a song. You stroll to the bush with a guitar and shout and sing and you don't hear anything why because you said the last time i went somewhere they laughed at me i need to let them know i'm not an anyhow person that motif already god says no if you want a song so that your songs will be a ladder for nations to hear and to cause the fire of revival to come you will not pray for 40 days i guarantee you make reference to my teaching for your glory please part one and two i think the media would give it to you you can go to our, our download portal koinoniadownload.org and then search for it there and get it for your glory one secret in my life and i will not lie to you i stand by the god of heaven is that most of my desires and my requests are never about I am not the final bus stop to everything I ask God everything I ask God to give me or do in my life I am an usher eventually he's the final bus stop Lord give me a child why because I'm a woman no give me a child why because Penina is laughing at me no give me a child why because I've been barren for 10 years no lord give me a child why an opportunity to be able to bring a priest on the earth god says now you are talking now you are talking lord increase my prayer group why because my brother's prayer group is expanding and god says nonsense there are more important things to be done lord increase my prayer group why because people think that i'm not anointed lord increase my church why so that i can show people that even from this village the whole world can see jesus no it looks like it's a nice prayer point lord i just want people to see you in and through my life and he says who is this calling me there is a language that god cannot resist thy kingdom come does not mean to say thy kingdom come thy kingdom comes means your life is like a funnel 
it channels everything into Christ prosperity lifting for the sake of thy house I desire thy prosperity Lord increase my prayer life increase my wealth increase my influence hallelujah praise the Lord are we blessed your intention and your motives so there is prayer that causes people to not receive because they ask amiss and from amplified we see that amiss means wrong motives it means prayer that is born out of selfishness it means prayer that has an unrighteous agenda this leads us to a very interesting um would i say subtopic that i'll just touch a little and then we'll move to something else the will of god write it down prayer is only answered according to scripture when that prayer is within the boundary of the will of god please listen to me very carefully that just because you are praying and you are making petitions remember we're looking at part two the second dimension of prayer that in obtaining promises and in making your petitions the boundary of your answered prayer is the will of god very important john chapter 9 verse 31 the b part and then we'll go to ephesians chapter 5 we'll start from 15 to 17 john chapter 9 god is helping us tonight john chapter 9 now look up please the bible says now we know that god heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Him he heareth. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5. See then that ye walk circumspectly, the word there is accurately, not as fools but as wise 16 redeeming the time why because the days are evil next verse let's read together being ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is watch this that means my petitions and my requests are guaranteed to receive an answer when number one they are from a motive that is not fleshly and carnal number two when they are within the coordinates of the word of god and the will of god if i pray a prayer outside of the will of god it will not be answered are we together come again please come thank you watch this let me use my two lovely people let's assume in this example that this is a husband and his dear wife and i'm a prayer warrior what am i and i go to god in prayer and say lord in the name of jesus christ i don't think that this marriage is correct this is my wife and in the mighty name of jesus christ this man something must happen between these two people to give me what belongs to me now the bible says what the lord has joined let no man put asunder is that true and you see that this kind of prayer number one the motif is selfish i'm not thinking about what this man will feel i'm not thinking about what this woman will feel i'm not even thinking about what the children will feel i'm so passionate about my desire to hell with whatever happens to them that kind of prayer is a wasted prayer no matter what is added on top fasting praying seat number two i am praying a prayer that is outside of the will of god now it is true that under certain circumstances you know it can be irreconcilable and these people may get married again and move on like it happened to ruth and naomi with boaz are we together now there are conditions that legitimize marriage again but we are talking in this context a healthy marriage and you are coming now to pray that god will make somebody to live and come to you is number one a selfish prayer it will not be answered there is no kingdom come in that prayer are we together and then number two watch this now 
it is outside of the will of god this is not how god joins people in holy matrimony it is against his character so it's a wasted prayer no matter who supports you in that prayer number two praying a prayer that your father should die so that you will get his inheritance is a stupid prayer it's not only an ungodly prayer are we together yes it is true that if your father passes on to glory of course you know a good man liveth an inheritance but a man who is alive are we together and you are alive too two of you are alive and you are saying god kill one person and allow one person to be alive so that i will get the money it's a wicked prayer that, that's why james said you kill not by using a knife that is that is murder that kind of prayer lord this is our father let him go now so that we will rest because you see we do many things in the body of christ that we call prayer god is purifying this experience of prayer is the reason why our prayer lives are unfruitful and it's the reason why when we mentor so many people in the prayer ministry we find out that their lives are ineffective because most prayer points are a derivative of lusts. it's amazing the nonsense people pray only god knows how many things i lay hands on here every end of the month and in as much as i prophesy that whatever is here god will, must answer he is going to vet it there are angels who will check yes this is kingdom come this is kingdom come nonsense this is kingdom come this is kingdom come god is not god is not a fool you don't write nonsense and drop it here and then you expect that just because an anointing came upon it no not every dead body came back to life when they touched it. You kill because you want to satisfy your lust. Koinonia, let me teach you something. Please listen to me. One of the things that you must pray for, not just in prayer alone, is, oh God, kill self in me. I don't know how to kneel down and cry you will miss too many things in destiny when your life is all about you and myself hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come I will be Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Thy kingdom come Thy will be Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Thy will be Elohim Adonai Make sure that your Christian experience is completely void of self. What is selfishness? The obsession for a thing, a realm, a result, regardless of the effect on the well-being of others. To hell with anybody if I want it. I don't care who dies. I don't care what happens. That's their cup of tea. It is me. It's a dangerous way to live. You will never be a winner that way. Your door remains open for the assaults of darkness when it is all about you and what I want. If it be thy will, <clears throat> nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is selfishness that produces thieves. When you are stealing a man's phone, in your mind, for instance, you are not thinking, this person now, what of the contacts in his phone? Could it be that he's waiting for an alert for a job that will help his family? Could it be the first out of 20 people in the family? You don't care. All I know is phones. Look at the people who steal phones, for instance, not just around here, all around the nation. They can literally carry maybe a knife or an axe or something. Harm somebody, the kind of injury that 200,000 will not solve. And carry a phone of 50,000 and sell it for 6,000. That is the epitome.
symptom of self. What of people who their loved ones die and then they collect inheritance and uncles and aunties say, come and sit down here. I am your father's elder brother, your mother's younger brother. Bring all the money. And then they take peanuts and give the family and sit on their inheritance. Self. What will make a politician carry scholarship for students? Students that some of them are the only ones sponsoring themselves. And he will carry their entire scholarship and put it at the back of his pocket and live with it. Self. The foundation of wickedness is selfishness. The foundation of wickedness is self-centeredness. That is why the apex, the zenith of love is surrender and sacrifice. Are you learning this now? So the Bible says to know the will of God. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Let's talk a bit about the will of God. Now, I've done a few teachings about the will of God. We are still discussing the second point, dimension of prayer. The concept of the will of God must be understood for your prayer to be accurate and to be rich. The will of God means many things for many people. I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I've listened to different teachings about the will of God and I've explored, I've studied the Bible myself and I've found out that many things people teach as relating the will of God is wrong. It's wrong. Two scriptures, Colossians 1 verse 9, please. It's an anthem here every time we continue. For this cause we also, Paul is speaking, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to do what? So he's talking of prayer here. Pray for you. And to desire that ye be filled with, number one, the knowledge of his will. And then in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So a man can be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, the last verse, and then I teach a bit on the will of God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Ready? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What is the will of God? The answer was clearly stated in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. What is the will of God? Matthew chapter 6 and 10. Everybody read it. One to read. Thy kingdom come. It's not supposed to be a full stop there. It's actually supposed to be a comma. Thy kingdom come by thy will being done in the earth as it is in the heavens so what is the will of god the will of god represents every action that causes the kingdom to come and causes christ to be glorified that is the will of god please understand this in the simplest term the will of god is not just what is right because the concept of rightness is relative in our world the will of god is any activity and any action let me define it very well. Number one, inspired of the Spirit. Number two, consistent with Scripture. Number three, that is able to cause the kingdom, the influence of Christ to come and that Christ be glorified. Whatever activity that revolves within that circumference can be called the will of God. Please understand this. The will of God, number one, inspired of the spirit number two consistent with the character of scripture number three is able to cause the influence of heaven to be revealed in a life and within a territory and number four it ultimately glorifies christ whatever does not subscribe to these terms cannot should never be called the will of god this is a very powerful teaching Are we together the will of god this is the answer 
whatever has the opportunity to cause the kingdom to come and to cause Christ to be glorified and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men the will of God now watch this most of the main teachings have taught about the good will of God the acceptable the perfect will of God and so on and so forth and those things are there but I, I do not think that those are I believe this is my opinion and I, I believe it's consistent from scripture that there are only two dimensions to the will of God number one I call it the revealed will of God number two I call it the permissible will of God that's all there is and let me let me define it very quickly I hope you are not confused in this lecture remember we are still on point two are we together the second dimension of prayer but now it has necessitated doing a quick course on understanding the will of God the revealed will of God write this down please the revealed will of God is the will of God as revealed primarily from scripture full stop the will of God as as known to man primarily from scripture there is a reason why I say that please follow carefully God will give us intelligence now that the revealed will of God represents the dimension of God's will that has been made known to man primarily from scripture notice I didn't say only from scripture but primarily from scripture there are other auxiliary support systems of obtaining the revealed will of God one is prophecy one is visions one dreams are we together but the degree of error and inaccuracy in all these other methods is the reason why they all submit to scripture i have taught this that the prophecy of scripture is the highest the noblest and most accurate of all prophecies word of knowledge prophecy like the dispensing of that gift or that office and all other spiritual media for obtaining the will of God they work but they have a very high degree of error and the errors are caused by many things there is the error of perception there is the error of reception there is the error of interpretation are we together now there is the error that comes as a result of the low level of renewal in the interpreter all of these things together are a mix and they corrupt the purity of the voice of god through all those channels you are safest when you understand and discern the will of god as revealed from scripture i believe strongly that scripture was written so that it would not be changed if scripture was only recorded in a radio it would have been changed by now scripture was written it is written you hardly change what is written are we together that means when i want to explore the will of god for his program for my life my first area of search is not a dream look up please my first area of search is not apostle joshua selman to prophesy to you my first area of search is scripture and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture that is able to do what to make you wise unto salvation it is very important let me give you an example oh boy an example of the revealed will of God first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 everyone please read ready one to read who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth it is God's desire this is a revealed will of God there is no need asking oh God do you want my father to be saved oh god do you want my mother to be saved your prayer is lord give me the strategy for the salvation not whether he will be saved or not 
asking God whether someone should be saved is not correct because scripture has already opened his will number two asking whether it is God's desire for the saints to do well is not a will that is hidden are we together now yes Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think towards you say yet the Lord thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you an expected end there is the will of God as revealed from scripture this is very important as we prepare to go to the third dimension because you see until you know what the will of God is you will not be able to make certain requests there are things we do as a ministry there are privileges we give to workers there are privileges we give to leaders are we together now it is it is something that has been put on ground the workers the leaders know and based on that knowledge it's not a mystery if they are if the workers are not sure they can go to their heads of department and their executives who help to interpret what has been put down by the ministry as far as their welfare and their provision is concerned are we together now yes for instance in this ministry whatever program we are doing as workers or whatever the moment it is night it is mandatory that under normal circumstances vehicles are around to help alleviate the stress of moving in darkness it's not something that is a special arrangement it is so after this service now there are buses that will be waiting to pick people are we together now now asking apostle do you think that there will be a boss after this service it's unnecessary because that will has been revealed are you getting what i'm saying now the scripture already has the most accurate dimension of god's will his will as revealed in scripture and then demonstrated in christ now listen carefully the bible calls jesus the image of the invisible god and i've taught you here that jesus came as a correction of the perceptions we had about god there were many things we did not know about god there were many things we knew but not properly about god so we look at the life of jesus in his earth work and we learn god by looking at jesus there's no need asking whether god is a god of love we see it in jesus we see how he treated sinners and publicans we see how he treated children we see how he wept at people's funerals so we know that god is love because jesus is was and continues to be loved are we together now god is a giver how do i know that five loaves four loaves little children have you any catch cast your net to the right side his life was full of giving till he gave his life so i know god is a giver so when the bible says he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him i trust god because i see that truth of scripture revealed in jesus i know that god is slow to anger and judgment why because jesus was walking with some disciples and they saw some other people and said can we command fire to fall and jesus said do you not know what spirit you are of the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Jesus became a demonstration of that. So nobody will come and talk nonsense and tell you, ah, God will kill you tomorrow, throw away all that garbage. Jesus, greater than any prophet, is a representation of the fact that God is slow to anger. Let God be true and every man a liar. Are we together now? It is the reason why we edit prophecies based on scripture, and based on jesus the christ looking up to jesus he can be looked up to he is the author and the finisher of our faith that means our journey is with reference to the standard he gave us there is nowhere in all the 33 and a half years of jesus that i see him intentionally plotting evil against any so god does not think evil because as seen in the christ it was not there it is true that he judges but god is slow to anger 
So away with that theology that makes it look like God is chasing every man just to destroy you. It's not supposed to be a license for licentiousness. Don't get me wrong. But that it is consoling to know that we are wrapped up in the love of the Father. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed. When Jesus saw people who were, who, who were crying in funerals, he joined them to weep. We do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity you know why i teach you this because the days that are coming are coming with too much spirituality and spiritism if you are not grounded on scripture many things will confuse you you will soon not know who god is again because there are pseudo actions that look spiritual but they are not consistent with the christ look up to jesus not apostle joshua selman look up to jesus not a preacher paul only said follow me as i follow christ before you follow me see who i'm following are we together let me tell you this the revelation of god's love in my life has done something to me when i say god loves me i really mean it it's not because of the results he loves me i have an understanding with god not only see my father this is not about covenant of ministry and this, god loves me i hear the chains falling that's what is happening tonight chains from all kinds of teachings well-meaning but destructive the will of God is that all men be saved and all men come into the knowledge of him. It is the reason why in this ministry, for instance, we do not fight our wounded soldiers. We stand for them. If people do things and go down, we are quick to come. You see me preach and it looks like I'm always holding a cane. Yes, I'm holding a cane, but remember thy rod and thy staff. I told you they don't do the same thing. Rod is for correction staff is to draw you you need both if you are a preacher and you have only staff you will see the kind of members you produce if you have only a rod you also see the kind of members you produce to totally comfort people you need the rod and the staff hallelujah i love people if you are not growing in love you do not know god and the love of christ is not at work in you it doesn't matter what village you come from we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation are we together we have been grafted into that life of love by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you heal the sick not when you preach love i hear the chains falling let fear live your life I hear the chains falling. You cannot serve God in fear. You serve God in reverence. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. One of the most beautiful times in Koinonia here is when. We are done with the service and i have to hug my children you see all of them come over me that thing gives me a feeling that i cannot begin to describe no matter how you look at me and no matter what you are holding i turn to my children and give them a big hug they come with their their wet shirt from fighting over juice and so i still hug them like that i love them behold what manner of love the father has bestowed the love of God is a very powerful revelation. Many people have exaggerated it. And their lives continue to be shredded into nonsense. They allow the devil to just come. And people have exaggerated the love of the Father to the point that they have covered the issue of hellfire. Hell is still there. Listen to my message last week. Hell is there. Hell is real. Lake of fire is even worse than hell. Many people talk about hell and leave lake of fire. Hell is a spirit. Hell itself will be relocated to the lake of fire. Those who are in hell now have not officially started their judgment. The judgment will officially start when death, hell, the grave will be relocated into the lake of fire. We don't know who is there, but one thing we know is that there are spirits who are there bound in everlasting chains. 
what I just told you is also love use this as a father and see how correct your children will be when I was in secondary school before they flog you they will tell you what you did wrong you will accept that I did wrong they will pray for you then they will flog you let's start koinonia secondary schools you will see how we we'll train these children i'm not going to bring this secular demonic babylonian training imagine that you flog your child and he knows what he did wrong just because you prayed for him does not mean you should not whip him foolishness is bound in the the heart of a child the rod of correction not prayer will drive it far from him there is a psychological testimony that your child needs I'm only serving what the chef prepared this night. <laughs> Remember I told you that I'm only a waiter. The principal chef is the Holy Spirit. And his meals are always balanced and nourishing. Say amen. amen. So there is the revealed will of God. Number two, there is the permissible will of God. Let me talk about that very quickly. What is the permissible will of God? Now look up please. I will say it, then I'll repeat it as you write. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, God's character, and that directly exalt the Christ. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, comma, God's character and directly exalt Christ now just because it is permissible does not mean it is necessarily not the will of God permissible there does not mean God is managing it look up please there are things in scripture that are not written verbatim there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you will be in Zaria now there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you have five children now please look up there are dimensions of god's will that are not stated directly from scripture at that point we use the tools of righteousness we use the tools of god's character and we use the tools of the exaltation of christ as the compass to help us to be able to walk around that way these three first then in addition prophecies visions and the rest come notice the bible says the kingdom of god is in talk to me righteousness peace and joy never in visions never in prophecy no the kingdom of god is in righteousness that means god's methodology peace joy in the holy ghost now let me tell you this this is the major area where as believers we have suffered a great deal again and again this dimension of understanding the permissible will of god sam has a program in two weeks return to worship now whether or not you had a vision or a dream or god just put it in your heart the truth is that that program if it is done in righteousness are we together if it is done consistent with christ's character and if it will end up glorifying christ it is the will of god that will support the kingdom as powerful as the will revealed in scripture are you getting me now this is where all the other auxiliary things like finding who to marry a job to do there is nowhere in scripture where it is written that pastor alpha marry annie but within the boundary of righteousness if you marry an unbeliever it was not the will of god are we together now but that within the boundary of the will of god you can find a sister that loves god and her life is consistent what is virtue 
Virtue is a reflection of the, your closeness to the character of Christ. So I don't need to see a demonic sister or a devilish brother and ask, is that God's will? No. In Koinonia here, for instance, if you come and meet me and you tell me this girl that you use for example, you like her, for instance, it can be within the boundary of the will of God. If you are a well-behaved brother and you are responsible, are we together? It's my responsibility to vet you based on the will of God. Righteousness, responsibility, love. And I can tell you with all the blessings of God and God will stamp it and endorse it. Are we together? There are very few people on earth who because of their lives, listen carefully, and because of the nature of what they do for the kingdom, God will meticulously place restrictions around everything in their life because the role that they play, someone like me now, you see, almost everything about my life is meticulously guided. Do you know why? The reason is because I carry a burden of a generation and the implication of everything I do is generational but that is not that cannot be a template for you it is the price i have to pay for carrying this anointing there is a maximum number of cars god has told me i may never have it if at all it comes and it's more than that you see god has searched my life and he has he has optimized the things that must be in my life for me to be effective that functioning at your optimal level will require this there are people who functioning at their optimal level will require that they are millionaires not billionaires some it will even require that they are not millionaires at all but it cannot be a template for everybody scripture come this brother now can be trusting god for a job lord should i go to enugu or should i go to lagos it is not written here directly the only thing is that the path of the justice has a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day so these are foundations i can take out time if this brother is given a job right now he needs to look at that job does this job compromise on my work with god are we together will this help me to be responsible if it does then within that this gentleman can safely go on that job now if for any reason that decision he has taken is against destiny god will go out of his way god does not only lead by saying start he leads by saying stop there are times you don't wait for him to say start you move if he keeps quiet he's endorsing you if he says stop you return I, I'm, I'm showing you certain things about the will of god Oh God, should I build a house? God is a God of portions. It's never his will for me to be a tenant for life. So if some money comes, wisdom that is profitable. <laughs> wisdom that is profitable to direct should tell me buy land and start building. If it is not the will of God, God will show me. Are we together? Our precious men here have married good and lovely sisters. Not all of them saw visions. Some of them just directly in the name of honesty. They saw a sister who loved God. They came to me and I said, God bless you. You may be waiting forever. for a dream a vision some occult type encounter now listen I'm, I'm telling I'm using this as a point of contact listen my brother let me tell you I'm saying it is not a you can sit down and trust God look at a godly sister God already gave you what virtue is virtue is not just the ability to cook virtue is your closeness to the character of Christ find a godly sister that looks like that when a job 29 man marries a proverbs 
31 women, they will give birth to a Psalm 112 home. Are we together? There are people today who God already answered them and gave them good jobs. But not understanding the concept of the will of God. They are waiting for a vision. NMPC gave you a job, you rejected it because God called you into ministry. I'm not saying it's wrong. Good, good things came to you and you threw it away and God said, I've tried for you. And you are there now wallowing around and being punished for not discerning the will of God. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to see, to hear, and to discern the will of God. You are with a, a man who is smoking and drinking and ungodly, and you said I will change him. You are not in the will of God. Let me just tell you straight up this night. The ministry of transformation is exclusively the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Any man that does not change before marrying you will seldom change. He will remain that way. And any man who changes just because he wants to marry you has not changed. Whatever a man does to only you, he's not really, is not a virtue in him. If he's kind to only you, he's not kind. If he's truly kind, he will be kind to everybody. Kindness will so implicate him. Even if he tries to lie, to come out. A lady who washes only your plates is not neat. The virtue of thoroughness and excellence must spill out in every area. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains. When God brings a destiny helper that is blessed, you don't fight him because you have been taught that all blessings come from God through man to man. And if the men don't have what you are looking for, you will not have it. So it does not make you to look down on others, but you pay attention. When Joseph of Arimathea is coming, you pay attention. When Pharaoh is coming, oh Joseph, pay attention. When Boaz is coming, Ruth, pay attention. When Ahasuerus is calling for women, Esther, pay attention. It's how God lifts men. God lifts men by bringing those greater than you to lift you. It's a technology. It's not hidden. How does God increase a ministry? By anointing them and putting the word so that they minister to people. And the people that are built by that word will communicate benevolence. The offering you gave is not going to heaven. The offering you gave is what will pay boss tomorrow. By sounds. So it's not a mystery. The more I continue to be anointed and I bless you and dispense spiritual value. The more this ministry will continue to increase and I will also increase. There's no gimmick about it. So if you are poor and your pews are empty, the problem is the value, not just demons. The knowledge of God's will will help us to stop talking a lot of nonsense. Bishop Oyedeko says, every man's calling is a high calling. Nobody has a low calling. Everybody's calling is a high calling. So if you are failing in your life, take responsibility. Don't say, God made me to be small. Sit down and say, why is my life not moving forward? This cannot be the will of God for me. To keep begging every day as a man, moving from pillar to post. I am a prayer warrior, but in addition, I should be blessed to be a blessing. Genesis 12 verse 2, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Are we together? If you get married four months five months your wife refuses to get pregnant don't sit down asking nonsense and say whether that is God's will be fruitful Genesis 1 26 be fruitful is his written will the priest that blessed you on behalf of God prophesied to you immediately you should know something is wrong Listen, obey scripture. If you are wrong, let God take responsibility. Are we together? A 
a job that makes you compromise on your spiritual life a job that takes down your prayer life a job that cuts you away from the community of believers that can build you you don't need a vision get out of that job immediately i don't care how much you are being paid what shall it profit a man he's talking profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul i repeat get out of that job get out of that job don't sit down asking should i go pack your load and leave are we together yes you are in a church for instance that is full of manipulation and full of all kinds of things and you see that the character of what is done is not in accordance to scripture there is no integrity there is no godliness there is no feeding of the word of god there is the responsibility of a shepherd as designed by scripture any man who is not doing it is not a shepherd period i will give you pastors after my heart You sit down and you every week everything from you is going you pack your load and get out of that place there is no need praying and say lord should i stay there no are we together the will of god so when i'm praying back to what we are teaching when i'm praying my awareness of the will of god so he's praying father apostle use this lady for example and i just found out that i like her what is wrong with it i'm not saying i'm not saying she's your your your, your, your wife but if god joins two of you we're happy we join you what what that, that's i mean listen god never told ruth boaz is her husband boaz hunger took ruth and naomi they knew they were about to die she went to a field to clean her thing Boaz saw her a benevolent man no strings attached all marital processes start with a purified motif that is an expression of who you truly are he said I don't know who this young girl is but leave something for her let her be able to take it back to her mother and God said that's right remember God is looking for those who create the lineage that Jesus will be part of so he would not handle anything with laxity because Jesus is about to come through that tribe are we together if you come and meet me as a brother and say apostle God is showing me a particular lady I'll say let me stand representing what the parents will tell you straight up I'm not even going to waste your time do you love Jesus yes congratulations are you a responsible gentleman yes prove it there are two kinds of responsibility there's psychological responsibility where you are getting the mindset that will help you to be serious two there is structural responsibility where now you are beginning to produce food even if you don't have structural responsibility and you have a mindset that wins based on the word of God we can stand to say no the way you are going what is in your mind will eventually come are you seeing that but you are not responsible you are not under authority you are a careless person you live your life your relationship is like occult nobody is going to give you any daughter at least not not any of my ladies here and you ladies we have created a template to help you if you like don't follow a path that god has created for your redemption and and follow cunningly devised fables until it lands you in trouble see the the, the house of god is supposed to be a place of guidance I don't need to go to the Bible to find out whether it's the will of God for me to go back home this night. As soon as service is done and I'm done, I go back home. Why? Going back home subscribes to the law of responsibility. That every good man should have a home and should go back home and sleep at home. Are we together? Even the madman tried to stay in a place. It's the demons that made him restless. He tried. So men who don't stay at home. They are not responsible it's a revelation i hear the chains falling yeah. I hear the chains falling. let's
let's tie up this thing so the permissible will of god please look up please the permissible will of god actions that are within the boundary of righteousness if you have to cheat your brother to increase you cannot say it's the will of god you cannot call that favor if you have to bring people down to rise that is not favor if you have to kill to rise that is not favor if you have to bring two hundred and fifty thousand before you get a job hello that is not favor let me tell you the truth no sir it is not favor knowing what the will of god is so the first dimension of prayer is fellowship and growth the second dimension is obtaining promises and making requests all of this that we have been discussing are still under that thank you thank you so much the revealed will of god the permissible will of god the third dimension of prayer that we we'll discuss very quickly our time is gone is the dimension that makes for decrees and spiritual legislation decrees and spiritual legislation i've taught you three dimensions of prayer number one the dimension for fellowship and growth number two obtaining promises obtaining promises and i told you that to obtain promises you must number one have a heart that is selfless number two you must ensure that your request is within the boundary of the will of god then you can ask confidently this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in his name he heareth us are we together and then number three the dimension of decrees and spiritual legislation now please pay attention this is the dimension of prayer that does not so much deal with talking to god this is the dimension of prayer that deals with rearranging realities based on the word of god please understand this is the dimension of prayer that is concerned with not only talking to god but talking to things talking to circumstances talking to time talking to demons talking to elements of creation to line up with the will of god that's why i took out time to talk to you about the will of god because if you do not know the will of god and the provisions of scripture decree and spiritual legislature will not be possible with you what then do we say to these things i know what god has made for me i know what god says should be in my life this is also the realm of prayer where words listen now become like arrows in a man's quiver words are instruments of creation the following scripture ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 please write down these scriptures these are the scriptures that we must have in our minds when we want to engage prayer as a system for making decrees and legislating spiritual realities ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 the a part says where the word of a king is talk to me there is power where the word of a king is and then revelation chapter 5 verse 10 just write it don't give us media just write it down the bible says we have been made unto our god kings and priests or a kingdom of priests and we shall reign not in heaven in the earth so i know under god that in christ my words are not ordinary 
my words are powerful please listen everybody overflow one two three online listen carefully this part of this teaching concerns you seriously number two proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 i'm giving you a few scriptures that guide you when making decrees and establishing realities in the spirit proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 death and life help us media we have to rush are in the power of the tongue death and life are not in the nozzle of a gun death and life are not in the stone of a catapult death and life are not in the edge of the sword the bible says they are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof i use words to program life i use words to program death i can program life over territories i can program death over territories number three job chapter 22 and 28 popular scripture write it down please job 22 28 thou shall also decree everybody say decree to decree means to pass as law thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody unto the one that decreed it thou shall decree a thing thou shall decree life thou shall decree increase thou shall decree victory let the redeemed of the lord say so god has already brought them as the redeemed let them say so are we together the word of a king thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon your ways number three isaiah 43 and verse 26 isaiah 43 and verse 26 read it please ready one two read put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou that thou might test be in other words bail yourself out of that situation bail yourself declare yourself acquitted come out of that situation by making decrease in prayer this family nobody rises in the name of jesus i decree i declare that the horns that keep men down i am exempted the bible says you are you are already breaking the chains you are you are exempting yourself listen let me tell you if you do not declare to be justified then whatever you see you take it like that scripture declare thou declare what declare thou health declare thou long life declare thou prosperity declare thou increase this is not just some name it claim it thing it's a it's an ordinance of the kingdom it is how we function in this kingdom god is called in genesis 1 2 3 the talking spirit the spirit that moves by talking listen please do not ever get to a point in your life where making decrease with understanding looks like a basic spiritual thing you are silent your destiny is silent you are silent every door remains closed declare thou that thou mightest be justified i declare over my life sometimes i stand in front of the mirror and i speak joshua selma you will never go down you go up and up and up the light of god is upon you the favor of god is upon you it's not every time that i pray that i'm praying for you there are times i'm praying for myself too there are times i'm praying for my own destiny even when I pray for you, I pray with intelligence. I know what the word of God says. Father, this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I declare your people are prospering. They are understanding. Their minds are enlarged. Listen, it's not every time you talk to God. No. There are times that you stand like Ezekiel and speak to the bones.
Can these bones live? Only thou knowest. And he says, prophesy. Prophesy. He spoke to the bones and there was a sound. And it came. And all the bones came together, but there was no life. And he says, son of man. He says, prophesy to the four winds. And say, thou wind, breathe upon this lane. And the breath entered them and they became an exceeding great army. Isaiah 41, 21. The Lord showed me this scripture in 2004. And it changed my life. One, two, please read. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. This is like a law court. And you are bringing the basis for why such and such and such should happen to you. Why should I lift your family? Why should I promote you? Bring forth your strong reasons. See, let me tell you this. Many people are prayerful, but they are wordless. Is why the prayer is not effective. We pray in tongues. Important. We pray to God and we ask prayers. But most of our prayers are outside of the jurisdiction and the methodologies of the word. It is important. See, this is the missing link. This is where the disciples missed it. They were praying amiss. You can be prayerful and not get results because you are praying amiss. Fortified by the word. The first dimension of Jesus' growth as revealed in scripture is getting the word. First, then we see him praying. We did not have the opportunity to hear what he was saying in his 40 days prayer. But at least we heard what he said in Gethsemane. So we know that his prayer was consistent with scripture. If it be thy will. Produce your strong reasons. Listen, believers, your prayer life is going to be rich in this end time to the degree to which you understand these dimensions. As I approach the throne of grace to pray, I know that my prayer life is not all about petitions. There is a dimension of it that is tailored for fellowship. Let me tell you this. Many times, the determinant of what dimension you switch to is often the Holy Ghost. There are times you go with your heart heavy, but there are times that he chooses what dimension to be expressed in prayer. There are times you go to prayer wanting to decree and bind and cast, and God wants koinonia, fellowship. Are we together? Don't resist it. I'm saying this because many prayer warriors have missed it here. There are times you go to God and he, does, he just wants you to be still in his presence. And... You are just praying in tongues and his power is just upon you and you feel that you are not praying because you are not dissipating energy to be heard by another person whereas there is communion the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the koinonia the fellowship the sharing the participation and under those kinds of most times when god switches to that dimension what is happening to you is impartation most impartations happen through that time of fellowship it is not the binding and casting in that stillness you are about to go for a ministration and you are praying and you are just soaking and for hours all you are doing is lying down there like a dead man thirty minutes one hour and that anointing is on you waves and waves and waves of the glory you stand up from that encounter and go for your ministration and you will see the demonstration of the power and the spirit you will see great grace you will operate in the fullness of the grace that God allocated you ask those who know me when you see me praying and preparing for koinonia especially for miracle service you can be in the living room and you will not hear me sometimes when i'm alone just like that i can be walking around for a long time just walking around next thing i carry a paper i'm writing god is speaking to me 
I'm walking. Sometimes God is opening my eyes and I'm seeing the things that he's going to be doing. I'm writing and God is revealing things. See, let me tell you something. I'm not saying it's in the Bible, but it's something that has helped my prayer life. Try praying in the night. Minimize light. Many times when you pray in the night, you need darkness to see light. It's a mystery that only prayerful people understand. Help that person running out here. I have prayed most effective in an atmosphere where my eyes can see very few things. You hear God. The distractions are minimal. You are not looking and checking and then seeing your phone beep and say, ah, maybe it's the alert that has come. These things are distracting. God is speaking destiny things to you. You need your attention. I love praying in the night off the lights you may just have red lights here flashing green light it's enough for your eyes to see use your your phone that's why you know some of us who just gave our lives to christ now thank god for you but you see we had a privilege of praying well because many times we prayed outside and we prayed in the night when god gives you money and you build a good house build a beautiful garden so not for visitors for meeting with God go back to the Garden of Eden what a beautiful place and you are praying you are praying fellowship son you have done well it's time to move to the next level do it this way do it this way change this change that yes Lord you are praying sometimes it is god that introduces your petitions not you okay you were talking to me about the issue of finance for the ministry um let me tell you what you will do i am going to inspire you and a book is going to come the name of the book is maybe whatever it is and as you write this book my hand will come upon it and it will go to the ends of the earth yes lord you have received the blueprint you will write a book that does not make sense and it will bring results that don't make sense because you discuss with God in the secret place look at how God came to Abraham study God's study Abraham's prayer life it was full of fellowship And then there are times that you carry a burden and you go to God sincerely Lord we need to talk there are things we need to talk about see let me tell you this do not be afraid to come to God with your needs do not feel less spiritual the truth is that God wants your joy to be full bring the school fees issue bring the your brother issue bring the salvation issue bring it before him Lord, why am I still going back to my village in my dreams? I thought I was free. Come before him. He's your father. This attack that I thought left me, this thing that I thought I'd, breaking, I'd broken free from one year, two years ago, why is it coming back to my life? You can come to God in prayer. Lord, why is it that when I'm blessed, I'm only blessed for three weeks, one week, I go back to look like my past. Something is wrong. You can pray. You can go to the God who answers prayers. And then there are times, my brothers and my sisters, where you obtain grace from God, but you need to stand. Can I tell you this? Most of the victory of a believer, listen carefully, will come through dimension one and dimension three. When you do one and three effectively, you will have little of petitions to bring spare me two three minutes we'll wrap up with rules of engagement i will show you some of the do's and don'ts in prayers decrees are powerful my day i speak to you I command my morning, I command my afternoon, 
I command my evening, hear the word of the Lord. Line up according to God's word. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. It's not the devil that made it. If God made my day, let it look good. Because anything God makes, it is good. This is how you pray. Everything God made, it is good. I remove accidents from my day. I remove trouble from my day. I decree and declare. It is well with me. I decree and declare. Favor comes to me. You get into your shop. You don't sit down and start calling and say, I'm now here. No. You lock your door. I decree and declare. Even if it's in two minutes. I declare that favor comes today. By the power of the Holy Spirit. My products are a delight to many. They are coming by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Recently, God introduced a very great friend to my life. Wonderful man. Extremely wealthy man. Very, very, extremely wealthy. Um, I'll not mention the name. But then we're having a meeting with the man and then he spoke to me and he said, Apostle, let me tell you, before my workers start, seven, he's a billionaire, seven a.m., in the morning we all pray we have fasting sessions and we pray we declare to god that we have no wisdom on our own i say are you not blessed now away with that nonsense that when you pray your business you you involve god um, you are not being social go to dubai go to the gulf nations and see how these people take their idols and take it. they teach it as part of the ways to succeed they teach you to do your yoga. They teach you to do your transcendental meditation. They believe that if not for anything, it relaxes the mind. Only believers who are ashamed and afraid of God. I'm not saying to go and be praying during office hours. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that you need to involve God in your life unashamedly. Listen, if you are here and you are in business, I'm teaching you this as God grants you grace. Even if your business partner is an unbeliever, you may not just shout and pray, but even if it's under your breath, Lord, this is the day. I bless the bread I'm making. I bless my shop. I bless this. I decree and declare. And you will see how your day will look like. Lord, every troublemaker is far from all that I do. For the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Recently, I had, I had the story of a, a gentleman. This is true. A gentleman who was just sitting down and he got an alert of over eight zeros. And two days later, a prominent institution in this country just called him. And they said, they are going to come and carry you. To the court we are associating you to a fraud case and he said what is all this did you receive so 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 a lot yes sir remain silent until you come there true story a lot came to my destiny do you know what the account the money was to be transferred to i don't know how that happened it eventually found its way to his account most evil you think that is breakthrough that guy is in trouble because of that thing he may not get visas to travel again. It is not breakthrough. You want to transfer money, corrupt money, quickly to somebody's account. Then it's my own account. No, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. When I had that thing, I prayed for myself because people bless me all the time. I prayed for myself. Lord, let nobody carry stolen money in this country so that they will now put on newspaper exposed apostle joshua selman is involved with somebody's money shout no way listen i'm telling you that if you do not decree and you live your life barren you can receive 100 million in your church one year later you are in prison everything that is evil and would destroy you may god keep it far from your life but it will not just happen just by talking listen you are the priest of your destiny you are the prophet of your destiny i will continue speaking over your life but you must learn to speak speak as believers we approach life from the standpoint of victory 
Remember that our decree is to establish. Hallelujah. Let me just give you two rules of engagement. I've said it, but our time is up. Number one, rules of engagement. Prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Rules of engagement in the prayer ministry. Number one, prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Prayer must be approached from two standpoints. Number one, the love of God. The awareness of the love of God. The fatherhood of God. That once I am within the will of God, God is not withholding anything. To, so it gives me the confidence to approach him. And then number two, the victory. Please, this is important. Listen to me, believers. Whether it is warfare or spiritual decrees and legislature, you are already a, vic a victim if you do not realize that you are standing upon the victory and the liberty of Christ. That is the basis from which we approach prayer. We do not approach prayer to win. We approach prayer to establish realities that have already been wrought in the Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and when you read from verse 3 that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Listen to me. So whether we pray and say I command that cause to leave, you are not necessarily, listen to me, you are taking advantage of the victory that Christ has wrought and you are now superimposing it upon the rebellion of darkness. Rules of engagement. David already won before he met Goliath, but he still fought. David already won before his covenant already killed Goliath, but he stood before Goliath to establish it. That's why he said, Goliath, I'm, I'm here to bring down your head, give it to the birds. He's finished. Hallelujah. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But your sins was not atoned for by casting it out. Jesus came and died. His dying was not negating what he did in prophecy. His dying was giving it expression. So I believe in warfare. I believe in casting out demons. But my approach is from the standpoint of victory. Are we together now? Please take it down. Let me sing one song. We are preparing to, to wrap up. Um, what's that, darling, Jesse? Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen to me. Listen, Koinonia. You must approach life like one who has won. You must approach life like life owes you because you are victorious. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us. He's already doing thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. I never approach life to win. I approach life to establish victory. I never cast out devils um, as, as, as the basis of victory. I cast them out because the Bible tells me I already have authority. This is very important. It looks like it's a little issue, but it's a big deal in the realm of the spirit. Listen. You are already blessed. That's why you prosper. You prosper to give evidence to the blessing. Prosperity is manifesting the blessing on you. You are blessed with wisdom. You are blessed with relationships. You are blessed with favor. You are blessed with divine direction. These are true riches. When you engage them and they produce prosperity, 
it is not when money comes to you that you are blessed money comes as a receipt that it is true you are blessed are we together the awareness you own the universe you own yeah. everyone on earth you own that's my father the universe listen do you know why I approach prayer this way I don't approach prayer hoping that God will answer me no I don't approach if it is not the will of God I don't even pray it if I'm confused I inquire in prayer and the spirit of revelation will come and open up scripture and bring the voice of God I only pray when I'm sure of the will of God if I am not sure I pray to know the will of God then knowing the will of God I pray to establish it listen when you know this your prayer becomes rich because every time I catch you praying you should be doing one or more all of the following fellowship or obtaining promises in the spirit or establishing reality whether you are interceding for souls whether you are speaking over territories it comes under spiritual legislation that way you are walking in dominion this is what prayer was designed for we are doing many things today that prayer was not designed for it is the reason why we do not get results your prayer life cannot go down when you see the necessity of prayer you know that without prayer my fellowship will be bankrupt without prayer i cannot obtain promises and without prayer i cannot create a climate of the word of god in my life when do we pray all the time anytime anytime is right for prayer anytime is right for prayer you can be buffing and making decrees my day is blessed in the name of jesus any time may not be conducive for the study of the word because you need the bible you need materials you need time but any time is conducive for prayer i may excuse you for not reading your bible today but i will not excuse you for praying you will need time to settle down and really read and meditate but you don't need any time including when you turn to the other side on your bed you can train your spirit man listen if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost here with evidence of speaking in tongues it doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe about it there is a dimension of the priesthood of the saints that you may never come into there are dimensions that doesn't just need an event the power of God is coming on two people outside two people outside please bring them here two people outside I started sensing a very mighty grace ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation please bring them here just listen to the word the Lord will do a quick work two people I see like rain the rain of the spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Yes, Ali Baru Satyarada. Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ 
over your lives and destinies. This is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming out to me. Number three, and then we'll pray. The third way that the word becomes flesh, that possibilities get to you, is through the ministry of men. 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation, the word becomes a testimony. When you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things, then the word becomes flesh. When men are introduced in your life, men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say such as in is in heaven. He said such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car. And give you the key to the car. A man can have. But you see. The things that men have. Real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all, healing all, they that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, you will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. The rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you're about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave your seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now.
A few weeks ago, I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. Is this thing is a grace? It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that He must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils. I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now 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 I command closed doors be open closed doors be open right now be open closed by the hand of darkness I declare be open, be open now, be open now, be open now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh. is showing me chains over people's heads. I decree and declare, anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three, inside, outside, online I want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief. There is force and power in the name. One two, three 
every orchestration. Go now. Be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven. I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people. Married or unmarried, let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you, the anointing of God is coming on people. Whether you are married or not, some of you are standing in for your loved ones. I declare again, womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such. I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people. Right now, I decree and declare every chain, Makatoska Barakata, holding anyone now. In the name of Jesus, I break those chains now. 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 Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach. Any kind of abdominal pain. Doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid, doesn't matter whatever. Just lay your hands here right now. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your stomach area. And in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the Spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands. 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction. Ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction. Direction. Direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression 
I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three, Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three, receive speed. Speed, speed, speed in your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty janet i'm hearing a name janet hold on please don't don't be rowdy just relax stand up my dear that lady on green stand up where are you coming from Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax, calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen, God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God. We're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare let it go now I cause it by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on a lady just where this my brothers are standing bring that person just this row I'm seeing a cloud just right here right now as I'm speaking the anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there please bring the person is a lady bring her Janet I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ hi this is an instruction God is giving me there is a family I'm seeing the family it's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Benway State. Benway State. Benway State. I curse the workings of darkness over that territory. 
in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory that is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please, very quickly, because I want to take our time and God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing. Just like fire. Three families. Three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes. Who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes. Your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hi. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of Jesus Christ just hold that there I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this road. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, just don't worry, leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this road, like this, this road right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ, right now I command it must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go by the grace of God. 
I set you free, my dear. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Father, there is... Please don't be embarrassed. We may not prophesy to everyone, but there is a woman here. Don't be embarrassed. You just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person, please? There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Quara State. Yoruba family from Quara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family. I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so even by the power of the Holy Spirit that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Um, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please come. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for, and God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is, but in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you. Your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I bear that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a burden. I draw from the bowels of prophecy, and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
the son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. According to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for and she should expect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people. Some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna, how long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Yes, sir. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? I'm working here. Where? I'm working in Kaduna. Kaduna. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ebu. There is a grace. Please hear me. What, what, where do you work? I work with the Lion Advertise. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams, huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them, but there are dreams that are oppressions, a lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down, your life will change. Amen. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. 
in the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand is, is not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one. I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two. I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released... Let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? Yola, sir. Come. Yes. Where are the other two people? Oh. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way madam I want to pray for you look at me stand up my friend why by the life here who is sick madam I want to pray for you you see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, you're going to start having what looks like a growth. And it will later become cancer. Because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. Yes, no. Sir. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never. 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 That everyone encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adamawa too. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh, you just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a launderer. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, guy, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician. 
in Adam our state. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zechariah. Yes, he's presenting this is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member and yet he's doing... Now, I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship and just of a sudden, he changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody, huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. that the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny and this man is not that he's using a laundry to washing clothes like, a, like an animal sir you have come here for God to change your life and I'm praying for you by the God of heaven the one who put this miracle service together let things change now by the power of the Holy Ghost I declare favor upon your life let things turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how sir, speak anyone. <laughs> Divide visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you I want a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. <laughs> That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, Otherwise, you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female, when our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me um, male children, female children. Of course, I understand. I'm, I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, Look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do. God, I, I do believe that it's possible. Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he leads upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again and he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my younger okay. sister. 
I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing, kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No messes again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business. To. I'm not saying you should not honor people. But... The times that we are living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years. No child. Her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Six months now. I'm, I'm the only one. Six here. months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, he, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, he, now, I, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's staying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman and think the husband is this, mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back with the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, he becomes serious. And just when he's deciding to do anything marriage, it must scatter. You continue to enter relationships relationships, loving and unloving, loving and unloving. Today you are in love, tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself. I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, inside and outside, anyone who is under that category, by the God of heaven, let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. Let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. You see, please give this woman her photo, that woman under the anointing. We have to pray. Um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out, but in this family, you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage, out of, and, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming? Why is she coming out? The, the family is, she just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she, she, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not, you see, the thing about the anointing, I told you, sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that, you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because... Let me remind you, even as he has reminded you, that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please. When that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hand. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. 
in the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly, gentle man will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, kapoush kalibra atasubati katea, garu sekete barato shadekata, shaproske paru kapa, embregete shali karuska baruta, emprakato sekata, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse so, something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare, be free from that spirit. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone. But we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe. Um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we are going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three. And then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down let's call that overflow four okay okay there is there is overflow two b then there is overflow four please listen this is overflow one this is overflow two there is overflow two b from this place right to the roadside second equa down then there's overflow four just from the gate of overflow 3. Then we have overflow 3 in the main building. And then online. Please make your way. Come out and stand according to those various overflows. There will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us. You can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Baratos Calabrandege Baratos Kedi Abratos Zadege Baratos Shalekatos Ente Prata Salagato Bradikini Carusa Tabradisha. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern 
that is written here. As God is visiting you here, every other person connected to you whose request you have written here, we command a miracle for them where they are. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus, And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here, we put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here wept in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed. In the name of Jesus, please believe. Let your... Don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here, every grounded business, every grounded family, hear the word of the Lord. I command and I declare, come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request, I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus, I compel them to attend to your matters. I compel them to attend to your matter. I compel them to attend to your matter. Everything that should have happened and has not yet happened, according to the program of God, you know you should have entered that level and you are not there. By prophecy, I push you to that level. By prophecy, I push you to that level. Listen. You see, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm not just speaking. I'm placing something upon your life. You may not see it, but you leave this place and watch what happens to you. Then you will see things turn around. Let me pray for you. The kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life. Please receive this one. In the name that is above all names, May that mantle like a cloak, Zakata Pakatos, Kepeketos Kabaruta, 
Take favor. Take favor. Carry favor. Carry favor in the name of Jesus. Every area you have struggled in your life, you have done what you know to do. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place. I pray for you. This is an impartation. Wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season. Let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said, this is the Lord's doing. As you are lifting your hands, may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits. Anyone in ministry here, I declare over you, go back to your various assemblies and platforms. Let there be fire on your altar. Fire on your altar. Fire on the ministration. Let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully. In the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Let's pray over our finances. This issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees. Bringing many families to their knees. Distracting people. The time we should spend on the things of the kingdom. We are focusing on money. What to eat. What to wear. House rent. Building projects. It is not the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month, even beginning from today, receive strange financial help. Receive strange financial help. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, strange financial help. Everyone under the sound of my voice, trusting God for an honorable job. Listen, there are jobs that don't have honor. They are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity, that will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer life fire, word life fire, fellowship with the spirit fire, no room for up today down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, 
I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the world, stay in prayer, not rush in and rush out and want power. God is not a magician. I pray for you. The unction to stay, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated, there are some of you now, listen, there are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely, there are dimensions of power, there are haziness certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception there is a level of authority there is an office you should be sitting on now but it's not yet there i pray for you the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now Listen, everything in your life that has refused to grow, God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast, they will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue, but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here, that death is looming around the corridors of your life. All your loved ones, all those connected to you, spiritually and by bloodline, I declare, let death lose its grip over you now. Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez, was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. 
may that grace and may that honor rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise mighty God wave your hands and give Jesus praise Father we thank you by the wave offering we receive we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movements till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning and in reality we believe that it is the greatest miracle there are people here who came to this place confused looking for Jesus sincerely religion refused to give you sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus and there are others who are saying apostle I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly-dallying. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here quickly i like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now quickly i don't expect you to be thinking about it keep standing it's something you should know keep coming run to jesus don't let any friend hold your hand and say don't embarrass yourself don't let any relative keep you bound our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important. That we never lose out on soul winning let me say this it is not just an evangelical agenda it is not an orthodox agenda it is not a man of god agenda it is the only way men come to this kingdom no matter what we do please you're a man of god here hear me don't be careless over soul winning it is important that people be given an opportunity except you don't know what salvation is if you really understand what the new birth is you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely, Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I believe in you that you are the son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit from today. I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. The Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but um, please listen. We're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know, I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God. That's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take... They take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place. And um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt... I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to, to do that honor. And I think, I hope I'm right. Yes, it should be him. Um, I saw Elisha Maman somewhere. He just squeezed himself. That's him. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far. Um, aside from those that I called, within a few minutes, I will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, Aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, overflow one, overflow two, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. 
Never take men for granted. When, when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. Are we together? Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. But on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, the apostle of the church, I welcome you to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Many of you have heard about the wonderful things that God is doing here. Many of you have partaken of the same. And it's my joy to truly welcome you. You have come from far. We've been and outside this nation. Um, I'm sure that there are people here that cut across all walks of life. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate you. This is our miracle service. Um, we meet here Fridays and special times on Sundays um, when there's a fixed time. But I just want you to know that I love you. We love you as a family of faith. Thank you for taking the time. And um, we want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you this. You will not have to tell people you came here. The glory and the kind of results you will see in your life will be a testament. Amen. Let's stretch our hands to them and bless them. We love you and we are praying for you. From the depth of our hearts, we are blessing you. Blessing your ministries, blessing your businesses, blessing your career, blessing your family. We want to see the hand of God upon your life. We want to see you loving the Lord like never before. We want to see you growing in the things of God. We want to see you walking in purpose and destiny. We want to see the gates of hell stamped by and through your life. This is why we pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord reveal himself to you. The Lord bring you into a dimension of intimacy. The Lord. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.